I mean, somebody has to figure out how to get like A to B, right? I'm going to go from um, Nia Bay to Rez, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to England, mm -hmm. London, England, because mm -hmm. we like the bread with the soup in it. Mm -hmm. So how the heck do we get there? Stick an aeroplane. Yeah, but how's the airplane know which direction to go? And it ain't a straight line. That is interesting, isn't it? Welcome to another episode of Driving to the Riz with your favorite hosts, Larry and Dinelia. Okay, then. <laughs> no games there. No games there. But, but this article is likely to shake some things. Yes, yes, indeed. When you read it, when you talk about it, when you look at it, so maybe not a good idea to listen to it while you're driving. Or... Probably this one, I think, if you're driving, yeah, it's probably better to park when you start feeling wobbly? the earth start to wobble. <laughs> It's a little I bit wobbly. I think wobbling. that'll be your clue. When the earth starts wobbling, they probably should pull over. Yeah. But if, if you don't get an earth wobble, you, you'll be all right. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. This one's about flat earth. I mean, round earth. I mean, sphere earth. I mean, domed earth. A hollow earth. Oh, I mean, hollow earth. Or something else entirely. Or it could be something else entirely. It could be. Well. Should we start it or? We're going to start our own movement. Something else entirely earth. <laughs> <laughs> that would be actually a really cool movement to start, wouldn't it? Sure, sure. Yeah, it would. Because I, I don't know about you, but in the forums I regularly um, travel in mm -hmm. and the uh, subscribe star, I mean, the. Um, He's telegram, already wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> the telegram groups. Yes. As soon as the flat earth comes around, it's on like Donkey Kong. It is. There's like, it's very it's partisan. Like, it could be a medical. Telegram thread, flat earth comes, it's over. It's over. There's like two days worth of flat earth arguments. Mm -hmm. And uh, flat earthers and the round earthers are both 100% uh, right. Yes. And yeah. you can't convince them otherwise, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So we're the something else entirely earth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Shall we begin? Okay. I guess the best way is give it a start. Let's give it a start. Try not to get too wobbly, honey. I'm not wobbly. You're a little bit wobbly. <laughs> in a couple of my novels and in many of my recent articles and podcasts, I've been talking about Earth as we know it, or the larger Earth, Earth from an expanded awareness perspective and other such expressions. Yeah, I'm familiar with saying larger Earth. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes when we travel to Oregon, we bleed over into larger Earth. And then our uh, trip that should take six hours takes... 12, 15. Yes. And sometimes we never even get there after 12 hours of driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. These expressions are ways I instill a wonderment about how we understand what the earth truly is, its true nature, its shape, and our role within it. I have given experiential descriptions of the earth and, and its true nature in my novels, Interview with a Psychic Assassin, and the Earth Files, but even within the unconstrained parameters of a novel, the way to express what Earth is, is filled with cultural and societal barriers. Do you remember those novels, honey? Yeah, those are excellent. And um, it does scratch at Earth, more true, ex what's Earth, more truly. Mm -hmm. But I think um, the, um, I think how you've described it in here takes it one step further even. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to also be exploring the true nature of Earth in our new series, The Whisper Team. Team, Team Whisper. Whisper. <laughs> Team Whisper is a new set of novels that I'm going to be writing. One of them is about to be published. It should be published in February. And um, yeah, that one also explores that the true one, nature of Earth. That one has an audiobook version. Yes, it's going to be awesome. Yes. All right, let's go back. Recently, I heard a scientist say, even though our physical and direct experience of Earth, when we live and walk on it, is flat, we know scientifically that it is round. This scientist's words are loaded with the program that she's trying to push. 
Firstly, that she's saying that people who believe in a flat Earth are wrong and that the science proves that Earth is round. Secondly, as a well-respected scientist, she gives only two options. In her discourse, she presents us as an expert with only two possible options for the shape of Earth, flat or round. Well, a sphere. sphere. Yeah. Her, she used the word round, but, you know. It is sphere, yeah. And, of course, all she has to do is enter any one of my Telegram threads with this opinion mm -hmm. of fact, and she's going to get slaughtered by the flat earthers, who are going to get slaughtered by her, round <laughs> earthers, and it's dawn like Donkey Kong. <laughs> It is true, yes. It's another way to divide and conquer. Huh? It is a divide. It is a big yeah. divide. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll we'll do something else entirely, Earth. Yes. Even describing Earth with the word shape is actually not accurate. This is, I mean, that when you first web, do that, webbling. that's the first wobble. wobble. The first wobble is Don't use the word assigning shape. it a shape. Yeah. The word shape limits what we can understand Earth to be by restricting it with geometry. What would you say to the sentence, Earth doesn't have a static shape? <laughs> it's like, think about the shape of the world mm -hmm. when you're dreaming mm -hmm. or astral traveling or any of those things. What shape is anything? Mm -hmm. Is, that is what there a shape? It? Is there a shape that you could assign it? No. When you're dreaming? Yeah. Or astral traveling? Yeah, shape, yeah. shape, geometric shape of the your, of your dream. Your dream area is not. There is no geometry for it. That's a good example, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it. Still, even just considering two possible shapes for the Earth brings about an expansion of awareness about Earth. And as a curiosity here, both shape theories are supported by scientific evidence for that shape. In other words. Those who believe in a flat Earth have mountains of documents and scientific study proving it is flat, as do the round Earth believers. Well, they wouldn't. I don't think they would consider themselves believers. They are knowers. I <laughs> True point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's expand this awareness past flat and round shapes. Okay. We can start getting a better idea of what Earth is by taking away the word shape and replacing it with the word nature. So what's the nature of Earth? The nature of Earth is neither round nor flat. It is multidimensional and dictated by the perceptual frequency band that our physical body senses can perceive and agree as a collective of as possible. You know what's fascinating, what I find fascinating? Another wobble? Well, I found when I allowed this in, uh -huh. there's a website that's got some, I don't know, not Pleiadians, but it kind of looks like a Pleiadian extraterrestrial group channeling like advanced information about the nature of Earth. Mm -hmm. And they used almost these words. Really? And I couldn't believe it because I already looked at it mm -hmm. and I didn't see it. Wow. And then when I read this and then I read it to the ladies last night mm -hmm. and then looked again, there it was. Hmm. It all of a sudden has expanded a Babel to be like see. a part of my reality now. Wow. That's amazing. So these little pushes and these little nudges, they allow this information to come in that probably yeah. exists, but we can't even see it. Correct. Our primary physical experience of Earth it's a flat place as we walk and live on it. Mm -hmm. Some experience it as curved as they look in the distance and see objects slowly, slowly disappear. Like when I went fishing, you know, the mm -hmm. things would disappear. Although sometimes they wouldn't. <laughs> right. I was like, it looks, Canada's right there. Yesterday it was gone. Now it's here. I don't know why. <laughs> we, we can't really explain that one. You know, have you ever driven in a large expanse of desert and mm -hmm. there's a car in front of you or there's a car coming towards you. And even if it's curved, like up, the road is curved up, that vehicle only appears at a, a certain distance towards you. Or when they're going faster than you, at a certain distance, they vanish from view. Yeah, based on what I learned as a navigator, it's supposed to be around 7 to 14 miles, depending on your height up off the ground, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you get high enough, then it's even further, but... But the, the road doesn't disappear. Just the vehicle. 
I never paid close enough attention for that. I, I like playing with that to see how far the, I could see it before it vanishes. And when I looked at it, it felt like it was the atmosphere, the air, that at some point it's too thick and you can't see past it. Mm, that has some sense. That makes yeah. some sense. Especially if it's hot, right? Yeah. The temperatures change, uh, different temperatures between the ground and the air because it wobbles, you know? Yep. All right. It is also limited in our experience by the perceptions that we interpret as time, movement of physical objects through space. Yeah, it's like when you start adding in these things that you, you, you know, time is a concept or a relevant thing in our experience. They say it and you hear it all the time in other dimensions and dream worlds and other dimensions, I think, is mostly that time isn't exist like it does here. Mm. They don't, it isn't experienced linearly, which explains some of the some of the things that they have in special relativity, right? Like mm -hmm. the points touching each other because the time thing. Anyway, you know, time isn't exactly solid either. <laughs> so no. you add in time to our experience and you know, okay, <laughs> things are a little bit less solid than I thought. Yeah. And our collective agreements of what is true and possible. Yeah, we 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 get we don't give those enough weight. You yeah, know we what should, I mean? but we don't. Usually. Because we say, well, I believe the other thing, or I can believe something else, just easy. Uh -huh. But if you, I mean, the I'm not suggesting do it, but the test of it is just like on the Matrix movie, right? He tells them to jump off the building, you'll be fine. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. You will crash and You'll... die because <laughs> we collectively agreed that that's what's going to happen. So Right. So whether or not you delusion it. <laughs> <laughs> if you tell yourself it's different. Yeah, it's not the yeah. same as a collective, collective agreement, agreement level. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these don't even take into account things such as alternative timelines or what we individually agreed to experience. <sighs> We can literally program our body to see or not see things in the environment. That is a fact. Yes. And if you don't believe it, I can show you examples. Yeah. You can go to the magic show. Yeah. You can go to the mentalist places. You can Google up um, gorilla the and gorilla and the basketball. Yeah. You, you won't see Game. it. Yeah. Often we take visual records like photographs and videos and take written and audio notes of things to remember them later. Later, we may go back and look, read or listen to these records, and we will remember them and the things that have happened around them. Yeah, Sometimes, like however, we have zero recollection of the events, but they must have happened, we think, because we made a record of them. Well, right? Well, of course. So, it's just that we forgot. Right. Yeah. So, experience of reality, even though we don't recall what we see in the record we made of it, is that we simply forgot about the experience because obviously we did the thing we recorded. <laughs> but is that really the only option? That's like flat or round. Yeah. There are other options. There you may not options. have forgotten. You mm -hmm. may have had that experience in a different timeline or something. Yeah, a different you had a different version of you had it. Version of you had it. You didn't pay any it. That attention focus that was there wasn't the one that's now. Yeah, I mean, there are so could many, be a different frequency plane. so many options that we don't even consider, and mm -hmm. that's the nature of Earth part of that too. Yeah. Okay. Because the format that I'm using to impart this information and article is very limited in scope, I'm going to make a list of things you can start thinking about that will start to bring in new perceptions of what the nature of Earth truly is. And I've made a little list here. Yeah, this list is kind of, I don't Nine. know if it's a read thing. Can you try? I guess you could try reading yeah, it. Yeah, I can read parts of it, you know. You might want to look at this. It's in on the, the text. text. It's better. You can look it. at the text of the newsletter. If yeah. you don't know where to get it, it's at mm -hmm. Substack. Yeah. Slash. I, I do it mostly um, definitions and uh, the origin of words here. So for the first one, the word planet came from the Middle English planete. Anglo French, and then from Latin planeta, and then Greek, literally planes, and it literally means wanderer, to wander. So the word planet comes from a Greek word, wanderer, okay. something that moves or wanders. 
The second word, earth, Middle English, earthe, and eventually comes from the Greek word era. As, you know, the era, then you bring in time, right? This is when time is included, era. And if you think of wonder, wondering as movement of through space, and time is as move, uh, movement of objects through space, it comes down to the same thing. Era means, and it is the word that meant era of man, okay? Or age of man, an epoch. No, that's actually a word, the word world, <laughs> the era of man. Era, again, epoch, yeah. age, season, time. And the word world, world meant era of man. Number five, the um, Old English world, human experience, the affairs of life, a long period of time. And it also meant the human race, humanity, mankind. Isn't that interesting? It is. It's not what you expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have our concept of Earth and planet and epic and era all like separated and assigned based on what we learned in school, but we really never checked the origins. What do they mm, actually yeah. you know, come from? Yeah, what people were expressing when saying these words before, you know, modern scientific things came in or their interpretations of what it is came in that we are familiar with today. Also, um, a word f that described the physical world meant the middle enclosure, which is rooted in Germanic cosmology. Again, for the world, word world, right? The original Latin word for world was orbs. Mundus is a late translation for the Greek word cosmos. So now we have orb, we have cosmos, right? But cosmos actually meant right measure, symmetry, harmony, and beauty. So it's like something that was harmonious, right? Harmonious enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. And beautiful. These are my questions that we can ask ourselves. Larry, does water have a shape? Um, you know, it... Um, um, uh, uh, no, I don't uh, think it has a shape. It doesn't have a shape. It Or is it shaped by its vessel? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's shaped so. by its vessel. I mean, yeah. raindrops are shaped by the air pressure vessel. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, and in a lake, it's shaped by the bottom of the lake, mm -hmm. and the top is flat. Yeah. So it, it doesn't have pressure. a shape okay. on its own, right? No, yeah. Now imagine the vessel that contains the earth is your mind, and that the earth is like water. Does it even have a mind? I mean, a shape? <laughs> Does your mind have a shape? Yeah, no, no, does you? Yeah. What shape That's is your mind? Yeah, exactly. So if you're the... Using geometry's terms, what shape would you assign your mind? Exactly, yeah. That's the shape of the earth. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and so I think... things might get a little wobbly. Wobbly, right? Yeah, yeah. And I like the example you used of what shape is your dream world, right? Or the astral world, if you go off into the astral realms, um, out of the body experiences, what shape are those worlds? Exactly. Right? But it, the dream one are really like, because, yeah, when you're in a dream, what shape is that world? It doesn't actually have a shape, does it? doesn't have a shape. No. Except for the shape that your mind gives it. Okay, so here's a little exercise you can actually do at home. <laughs> All space photographs of Earth are admittedly Photoshop composites shaped and ordered to fit into a model of Earth that is round like a ball. The photographs don't show a ball. The real photographs don't show ball. In fact, if you go to Google Earth and look at your area, you will see that the map shows a lovely and perfect grid of squares. But if you click on the North Pole or South Pole, the images are no longer square, but ta tapered and edited into very long triangles to make them fit into the shape of a ball. Interestingly, also, the South Pole has a nine mile round area blacked out right in the smack in the, in the middle of it. Now, the, these uh, images have been photoshopped, you can tell, because 
all of the grids all around the planet, if you go to Google Earth, it actually says Google Earth on them and the, the, the year that that photograph was taken. And the photographs from the North or South Pole, the ones that have been tapered and made into tiny little pointed long triangles, their words is also tapered and elongated into a triangle. So mm. you can tell it's been edited to fit. Yeah, there, you know, the when you look at um, map projections, steered us flat, the Mercator projections, all that. When we were in the Coast Guard, we learned about the different projections and why they look like that when they make them flat. But clearly, it's the other way around. <laughs> I mean, if you took, if you literally took a picture anywhere without any uh, reference as zero being an equator, Took it from the north to the south pole or anywhere, it's still going to be the same thing. You're going to see flat. Yes, you're going to it's see It's going to be square. It's not yes. going to be a little pointy just because. No. It's at the end. And if it was truly a ball, you couldn't have a square photograph. It would you wouldn't be, be able to. Yeah, all of them would be little triangles or something. Yeah, they it would be, be round, yeah. They have to fit into a round shape. Anyways, Anyways. something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like what you see is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any absolute and static statements that individuals make when describing the Earth are inherently limited and thus erroneous. As you can see above, by stretching at what that name, the names that we call Earth by, mean, scratch even a little bit of it, we get something that moves that is an era related to humans, it is time, an enclosure of some sort, and something orderly, symmetrical, harmonious, and beautiful. It's almost worth repeating. That was the shape of the Earth, right? Yes. Yeah. So say that part again. As you can see above, by scratching at what the names we call Earth by mean... The, the, that was the list that we yeah. just talked about. Yeah, what was the world? Where did it come from? What did it mean? What is the planet? Era? What's the world? What's yeah. the earth? What's the yeah, epic and an era yeah. and all that? All those things. Okay. Even if you scratch at it a little bit, we get something that moves, right? Wanderer. Wanderer. And era, time. That is an era related to humans. It also meant mankind. Isn't that interesting? The earth meant yeah, mankind. Yeah, I never heard. I never knew that. Yeah. It is, quote, time, end of quote, an enclosure of some sort and something orderly, symmetrical, harmonious and beautiful. Cool. And my last sentence of the article is something also dis designed to expand your awareness. Allow the song of Earth to take you to new heights of awareness. Allow yourself to think past a static three-dimensional shape. Allow yourself to perceive Earth's true nature, even if it's just for a little bit of it. And this last paragraph is not grammatically incorrect, nor a typo. Let me just read it again. Allow yourself to perceive Earth's true nature, even if for a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I think there's a clue in there. Yes, yes. What do you think about that? Well, each time it alters a little bit more, you know, what I'm capable of, like conceiving of it as mm -hmm. we have a whisper in our mind, in our soul of what it actually is and a whisper of what our experience of it is and what we've decided to experience it grouply as. I mean, we know these things internally. We know them. And at the same time, the program societal agreement program it's pretty a pretty strong one right mm -hmm. and that strong one puts in the seeds of of uh historical doubt i would say to accept something as real other than what we now say it is right mm -hmm. even though truly you know a couple hundred years or whatever we know the same story everybody then they thought the world was flat tells this guy he said no it ain't it's round <laughs> yes and now everybody says it's round except for now a bunch of people say no it ain't it's flat yes and then a bunch of other ones say no it's neither of those it's domed it's right right and then you get the normal questions like well then how come you can go to the end and then you don't fall off mm -hmm. and all of these things 
require the geometry. It right? does, yeah. And some of them require turtles all the way up. So the earth's on the you know backs of the turtles. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah some of them require turtles. Some of them require a lot of things. I mean, our experience. One of the one of the one of the um, one of the backwards things is that our experience of it makes it true. Mm -hmm. So our experience of the earth as round or flat means that it is right. Not quite. I mean, that's, that's for us. For it us, means. that's yeah. what I mean. Is yeah. for you, the person, mm -hmm. the group of you who exist in a place where your all of your experience of the world is flat, including all the science that you believe, mm -hmm. and all the science that says it's round. You know, that's made up Distorted, science by liars, yeah. cheaters, sneaks, and or fools, fools, yeah. right? And vice versa. Yes, indeed. Within those groups those things are true one of the things that the one group likes to try to work out with the other group often i i've seen this is that if yours is true then how about this mm -hmm. right yeah how can you explain my dream if your dream <laughs> is true right my dream is different than yours so your Which dream is wrong true. if my dream's right right <laughs> but is that actually true <laughs> no it's not true it's not true it's not true but we still have to explain, you know, I mean, <laughs> like um, the pictures that we accept as real, we don't like to scratch them. You know, Correct. The picture of the earth from the moon, the picture of the what all, you know, the picture of um, the sun from the earth, because mm -hmm. we see it's round up there, it isn't. Not round, right? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, the moon, we are told, right? Here's an example. The moon. Oh, is yeah, round. the moon. <laughs> Let's say, yeah, we haven't even started on the moon yet. And the moon rotates at exactly the right speed so that we only see one side of the moon. Yeah. And it's round and flat. Right, yeah. And if we take a picture of it, it doesn't like get Curry. blurry at the edges. It's like yeah. uniformly flat. You know, flat. A flat so disc. But it doesn't like we flip around to the other side. Yeah. And you know, we have to make some stretches to allow for that. We do, yeah. Including that it even exists and its age is wrong and its, <laughs> and its mass is wrong and its distance from us is wrong. And all of these things are wrong. Yeah. But with the proper excuses, then it's right. <laughs> with the proper excuses. And some of those are like dark matter in the universe to give the universe enough mass. It has to have 90% mm -hmm. dark matter or things like these. These weird, like, guesses, right? It's like, yeah. we'll just have to make something up. It must be true because look, we see it. So must be true. It must be must true. Be but also, that's the, a little bit of this Earth thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, what are you gonna say? Um, uh, as we grow up, we ask questions, right? We ask questions of our parents, and we go to school and learn things and data. And we we are pre um, whatever what that word is, you know, uh, that we naturally will listen to authority and believe it, right? Because in a natural world, in a natural experience of life or for a person, we are naturally led by people who are wise and who know the answers to things and will never change it to a lie or try to limit our experience in any way or form. So there's an age of that and then we're programmed to believe things. And if you, even if with science, you scratch a little bit of it, and science, you'll find out it's all theoretical. It's all theories, probable theories. That's what science is. It has never even been called true or true or real. And most of the science that you might call like geometrical shapes and whatevers, um, are in closed systems, the science of closed systems. Yeah. In a closed system, you have this and you have that and the force equals, you know, the, the, the movement and all the other things, but it, theoretically in a closed system, if you bring it into the real world, you can't actually reproduce it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bit of scratching. Yeah. So at the end of this, you might feel a little more wobbly, less wobbly. You might feel like more or less certain, mm. less certain about the true shape of Earth. Because 
instead of that, we'll just think about it like this. What is the true nature of, of Earth? Earth yeah. Right? Yeah. So when we think about what the true nature of Earth, mm -hmm. then we're on the right track. We are. Yeah. So at some point, though, I mean, somebody has to figure out how to get like A to B, right? I'm going to go from um, Nia Bay, the res, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to England, mm -hmm. London, England, because mm -hmm. we like the bread with the soup in it. Mm -hmm. So how the heck do we get there? Take an airplane. Yeah, but how's the airplane know which direction to go? And it ain't a straight line. That is interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think somebody, I can't remember who it was, some guy, and I don't remember his name, but maybe we can, somebody can find him. He took all the flight paths um, and you can find them like in airline, air, airports and different locations. You can find flight paths. And he made, he turned all those little curves into, into straight lines. Mm -hmm. And then the curves and the way, the way that you go, for example, from England to Australia and you have to stop at all sorts of different locations made sense if the world was flat. Oh no. Yeah, but not if it was round. If it was round, it was a much shorter direct path. But if you flatten them out, it gives you a very different perspective, perspective of why people have to hop into all sorts of different locations to go somewhere from A to B. Mm. Or why those... Um, because if you look, I remember being an aeroplane and looking at the, all the flight paths because they usually have it on a screen in front of you. Right, and to get there, you go, eh, it's a yes. great circle route. A, like, let's circle it's called out. A, it's called a great circle route. And we're taught that in navigation yeah. that if you're traveling these long distances, a great circle route is much shorter than trying to do straight line across on the on the map. Uh -huh. Because it doesn't account for the spherical shape of the planet somehow or other. You gotta go <laughs> up strange. and then turn to get there straighter. Yeah, it's very strange. It's, it is very quite odd. strange. And we, we just call it the Great Circle. We're always like, okay, that's that's, that's a good enough explanation. Whatever. I got. Yeah. I, I believe you. Yeah. But if you look at it from like the, the whole map of the Earth with all these planes traveling, they're all like, it doesn't even follow that. The same ones going the same little band, you know, the curve. There's millions of little curves, like millions of little curves all over the place. It doesn't make any sense at all. And a little scratch. I don't know what it means or why. Yeah, like that, but it is. Yeah, I I'm I don't know. I mean, I know what I've been trained to believe, but I know that's based on geometry and i know that your glimpses of the true nature of earth and the true nature of our experience on earth will show you that's not what it is it's not a closed system it's not a closed system and it's not as a, a uh, geometry mm -hmm. but we are experiencing our life with it as a geometry yes yeah. so it's not like we discount or discard things that work Right. Just because they're not true, <laughs> but in the experience that we're having, they serve, right? Yeah, they serve within the constructive agreement. And sometimes they don't make sense and they don't serve. Like when we go to Oregon, sometimes we can take six hours to get to a certain city, and sometimes we can take 12. And I remember once we took 18. I remember, yeah, and I we remember. took the same route. The and I remember walking route. the speed limits. Same time. I remember of the day. checking our brakes. Yes. Gas. One mm -hmm. time it takes us three tank loads. Mm -hmm. Another time we're all the way there. One time. And in the morning we wake up and we drive some way back and don't even need gas. Yeah. I remember one time we got the super no ethanol gas and it got us there. And we took the non ethanol gas and it got us all the way back. But the little thing that says how many miles it'll mm -hmm. take you was 100 miles different. Yeah. But it's it still strange. didn't matter. Right. And I know, I know, we've left, <laughs> we've left early and it'd be two o'clock at night and we're at a rest stop, not yeah. there yet. Yeah. And another day, exact same path, we leave, eh, noon. Mm -hmm. And we get all the way there and past it. Yes. And have to turn around and come back. And it's not even midnight, it's not even 10. <laughs> 
So, so it serves you when we even thinking that it's constant, even thinking that it serves every time, that's a belief system that is not actually accurate. Mm. And you can say, well, what about the wind and the air movement and whatever? Well, if you're a bullet, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You see it. I looked up and I saw this massive, massive dark colored metal ship in the sky. And I turned around, just like looking at others, and nobody could see it, right? No one could see it. And as I looked, I tried to figure out, as I was questioning, with that larger perception, I was questioning how come I was talking with somebody at the time, this guy, he says, how come he can't see it, right? I mean, the other people in the neighborhood, nobody was bothering to look up or anything. And with this particular guy, I tapped in, says, how come he can't see it? And I saw a visual of like looking back in time to a point in our history where humans could were communicating at an experiential level, at a planetary level. And then suddenly I saw a man in a field looking up at that one of those ships being taken 